Well, good morning. It's almost a year since my original 12 volt room video. So, this is an update on my project. I've made a couple changes to my original project. First and most obvious, you'll see are these two big batteries I have here. These are 6 volt golf cart batteries. They're Interstate Workaholic U2200 deep cycle batteries. They, they are 220 amp hours each. And I have them wired in series since they're 6 volts, so I get 12 volts out of them. Then there's also the panel I've built. You could see that I've mounted more stuff onto the panel. I've got my amp meter right there. I used to have it lying on the table next to the batteries. I've added this main fuse to protect the whole circuit and it also serves as a battery disconnect since it's wired to the positive terminal of the battery bank. Pulling that fuse out would disconnect the whole battery from it. You'll see I've also have this bus bar. These are for the negative connection. All the negative or ground connections from my individual circuits hooked to that and then I have one wire going to the battery. It's a lot neater than trying to twist all the wires together onto the battery terminal. I also have this uh, voltmeter. It's a car battery analyzer which I bought from Walmart and it would normally plug into your cigarette lighter but I've removed the cigarette lighter thing from the top of it and hardwired it to my fuse block. I haven't really made any other changes to the electrical panel yet. There's still this uh, white thing with the heat sink on top which I'll explain to you later in this video. Okay, here's some of the things I have in my room that are using the power from the battery. First and foremost is this uh, Sony Explode car radio that I got from a friend. The CD player wasn't working when I first got it, but I fixed it already. It's wired to the battery bank through this low voltage landscape lighting cable, and I have a light switch here to turn it on and off. And that's my favorite radio station, 106.7 K-Rock. I also have this 12-volt uh, power outlet on the same circuit. Let me turn off the radio. This is a power outlet, cigarette lighter style, that I got out of a Chrysler minivan that was junked and it allows me to use uh, my car chargers to charge things like cell phones and iPods. This is a iGo car charger. It uses interchangeable connectors on the end that let you charge anything. This connector I normally keep on there is for my phone, but you could switch the connectors. This one's for an iPod and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, to switch the connectors, what you do is you pull this off and you simply, whoops, let me pick that up, I dropped it. And this would just plug onto the end and now you could charge your iPod. And I switch it back, I can go to charging my phone again. And to use it, what I could do is just plug it into the lighter socket, and you'll see it light up. Then I'll just plug my then I'll plug my phone into it. This is a old Motorola V551. And there you see it's charging now. All right, going down the line, we have this uh, desk lamp I've converted to use a MR16 halogen bulb. 
it runs off what's called a Anderson power pole connector right here. This is a 12 volt connector that's being used by the amateur radio community. And let me unplug that. And as you can see, the connection is the same on both sides, so you don't have to worry about which end is male or female. And you can see how they do it red on the right with the contact on top. And I also have this uh, cigarette lighter outlet again for my desk. This one's for running, this one's for stuff I might be running that would go on my desk. Sometimes I charge my phone off there. But I have a laptop computer, Hewlett Packard. And I've recently bought this thing for it. This is a Targus 70 watt auto air adapter for laptops. It takes uh, it takes 12 volts in through the cigarette lighter adapter, and it'll turn it into whatever voltage your laptop needs to run on. In my case, it my laptop needs a input voltage of I think it's 19 volts, and you could change this connector on the end so you could run any laptop, such as a Dell, Toshiba, IBM Lenvo, or Gateway or Sony. And you just plug it into that end, and this end plugs into the lighter outlet. And you could see that light up. And that's the charging lamp on it. Let's get to this white box with the black heat sink on top that I mentioned earlier in the video. This is a Santrex C40 charge controller or load controller depending on how you have it configured. I have it set up as a charge controller right now. What this does is since your solar panels would normally give out a higher voltage, let's say anywhere from between 17 to 21 volts open circuit, your batteries are normally 12 volts. And what this does is it'll take the higher voltage that comes out of the solar panels and it'll regulate the amount of voltage that goes into the batteries as they charge. And once the batteries are charged, what it what you, it does is it'll reduce the current going into the batteries, and that prevents the batteries from being overcharged. I don't have any solar panels hooked up yet. I'm still uh, saving money for them, but I plan to eventually have uh, two 80 watt solar panels in, hooked up in parallel somewhere in my backyard for about 160 watts worth of solar to keep up with my daily use. It's uh, kind of overcast today though, so even if I had them now, uh, I probably wouldn't expect much charge. I'm currently using a car battery charger to keep these two interstate deep cycles topped off. And it, they, I can get an idea of how much battery power and how long it will last for now. And that's pretty much it.